painting with such a broad brush. And several times in your report, twice on page four, once on page 10, you're, and in your presentation here, you say that uh, your staff noticed odors and noise here while they were in dish, yet it seems like you reached for every other excuse, smoking or uh, people traveling in traffic or people eating mothballs and chewing on toilet deodorant biscuits to uh, come up with a source anywhere but from those odors or the oil and gas uh, activities that are in the city, which you noted. Um, very disturbing. It, you, you, you take the 95 percentile of the, of the U.S. population, you know, you can figure that probably 50 percent or more of the males in the United States work in pretty toxic environments, whether it's agricultural, industrial, or commercial activities. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of our workers are just exposed to a lot of these chemicals. Uh, and probably at least 25% of the females are in the same group. So to paint with that broad of a brush, I mean, what we were looking for is we were looking for a study that, that found essentially what your study found, and that is, do these people have these chemicals in their blood and urine? Well, yes, they do. And, but you raise the level so high, you say, well, you know, if it's not above 95 percentile, it, it doesn't really count. But you know what, even if it does, it doesn't count anyway. Uh, so, you know, that, I, I don't really hear on Tuesday night of, of uh, uh, of this week, I don't want to say, call this thing fraudulent, but I tell you what, I'm pretty disturbed by how this was painted. It was a, a very unscientific study that came to some very, very hard conclusions, and I really don't see where the conclusions even match up with the data that you discovered. And that's what makes me think that maybe it's a little fraudulent or not quite on the up and up. Well, this was a public health investigation designed to determine if people have higher levels in their blood. And your concern about the percentage of people that, or the number of people that had detectable levels was something that we looked at, and that's why, unfortunately, it wasn't included in the report. But the graph that we have that looks at the level of detection of these compounds in the blood. The, the blue bars are the data that we collected. No, the, red the red bars are from the NHANES. So it's the same data that we compared our results to. Where do you find the um, It's on the web. Um, if you Google NHANES, it'll come up with all their investigation. And we use the 03, 04 data because that's the data that's final. The rest of the data hasn't been finalized yet. Um, one thing to note that the lab that we use, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, National Center for Environmental Health, has extremely low detection limits. So in a lot of these cases, if you would have these tests done at a doctor's office, you might have gotten a non-detect result when we detected something. Because when we looked at a couple of different labs, the labs had a level, a level of detection that was almost twice as high as the level of detection that we used. Well, the fact is your report shows that you did in fact find these chemicals in the people that you tested here in DISH. That's correct. But it looks like you used everything it reaching for absolute straws to come up with ways to explain away anything other than the possibility that these same chemicals that have been detected in the air and the water here in our community could not possibly be the source. Well, if we would, have, if it would have been a community-wide exposure, everyone or almost everyone that we tested would have had the higher levels. And we did not, I mean, you can see the data. We didn't find that everyone has higher levels. Yes, we had a large number of people that had detectable levels, but a lot of that's due to the lab that we use has really sensitive equipment and they can look at extremely low levels in the blood. And that's really what we wanted to do because we didn't want to use one of these commercial laboratories that would have come back with everything as non-detects and then we'd be coming back and telling y'all, no, we didn't find anything at all. We're telling you, yes, we did find some things that were detected, but in most cases, they were below what the general population has in their blood. 
Well, the message that this is sending is that, you know, the citizens of North Texas and the citizens of Dish have nothing to worry about. Just calm down and breathe deeper. <laughs> Well, the message we're trying to get across is that this is based upon the data we collected, and I believe that's said several times in the report, and it's even a limitation. This is a one-time sampling event, but if these exposures are ongoing, as are thought to be, then we should have some fairly accurate information about what levels are in the blood. And that's part of the... Yes, I have a... A statement more than a question, I think, uh, dealing with this 95 percentile thing again. I think it's safe to assume that the 95 percent of the residents throughout the United States that we're talking about here don't have a gas well in their backyard or front yard. For that yeah. uh, so, having, having said that, I find great, great difficulty even understanding, much less believing that the residents of the dish who have these components in their front yard, backyard, and surrounding area 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, could possibly test lower than 95% of the U.S. that you're talking about who no doubt don't have to deal with this on a daily basis. Speak for myself, I've experienced in the very last two days where I actually had to go in the house to get away from a smell that was so nauseating to my nervous system that my brain was telling me, hey, you better get inside and do some conditioned air, which I did. Uh, there again, I can't understand or even begin to believe that the people out there are going to be exposed to the same conditions and come up with this kind of result. I'm not saying that your report is biased, but at this point in time, it sure seems that way. That's all I got to say. Um, we had one of the best labs in the country, or the best lab in the country, analyze the data, and I'm 100% confident in the results. Now, granted, there could be variations. We might have missed something because, I mean, we had to plan in advance of when we're going to be out here. We did not advertise the date we were going to be out here, but we did send letters to participants and let them know we are coming out. And you know, I, I don't know. You know we might have, that's one of our lips and limitations. It's a one-time sampling event. Things change. We might have missed a change. We just don't know. But we are going to continue to work with the TCEQ. It, as Mayor Timlin said, there is the AM monitor that's, that's, uh, that's taking continuous samples. If it looks that there might be some kind of seasonal variations or something else that might warrant further investigation, and we can identify funding for additional investigation, we are more than willing to come back out here and collect more samples. Well, hey, I didn't get my turn. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mayor. I should have known you would have a very poignant question. Absolutely, I would. Uh, and and I, I would like to point out on the weekend, and certainly this, uh, as they said, this was planned well in advance. Uh, about 5 a.m. on that Saturday morning, the wind shifted from the north, and it was very, very strong from the north for the for the rest of it was west northwest for the entire rest of the weekend. Right. So just so you know that. But my question is, is the town of Dish, uh, we work with several groups, and one of the scientists that we work with specifically asked your boss to perform a tentatively identified compound study. Now it's my understanding that chemicals have signatures. So if you have toluene or xylene or benzene in your system and you have uh, a sulfur compound, then that, that limits the sources of exposure. And also, as you pointed out, uh, you didn't take any air samples and we also recommended that. And so I believe that if you had done that, you would have been able to see exactly